the Datsun name is coming back, Mercedes puts the brakes on the R-Class in the U.S., we get a first look at the new SL65 AMG Roadster, and we'll take a tour of an AutoWeek Reader's Garage. Hi, I'm Natalie, and this is the Vernal Equinox edition of AutoWeek TV. Although here in Detroit, it's more like summer than spring. That's okay, let's drop the top and go for a spin around the car world. Nissan is bringing back the Datsun brand, but like we reported before, we're not likely to see it here. The new Datsuns will be sold in markets such as India, Russia, and Indonesia. Nissan boss Carlos Ghosn said the new Datsuns will be eco-friendly and affordable. The first cars go on sale in about two years. Nissan quit using the Datsun brand in the early 1980s. The R-Class wagon has not been a big seller for Mercedes-Benz in the U.S., so if you want one, you better move quickly. Mercedes is pulling the R-Class from its U.S. lineup. There will not be a 2013 model. The automaker confirmed a report by Yahoo Autos of the move. One small irony is that Mercedes builds the R-Class in its plant in Alabama. It will continue to do that and export the wagons to other markets. Through the first two months of this year, Mercedes sold just 293 R-Class wagons in the U.S. That's down a third from last year. In other news from Mercedes, the automaker is getting revved up for next month's New York Auto Show by giving us a first look at the redesigned SL65 AMG. Power comes from a twin-turbo V12 engine rated at 621 horsepower. It drives the rear wheels via a 7-speed automatic gearbox. The sprint to 60 miles per hour takes 3.9 seconds and the speedometer stops climbing at 186 miles per hour. And like the rest of the SL range, the AMG version makes use of more aluminum and other weight-saving measures. The curb weight drops by about 250 pounds. That's the car news for today. We're going to leave you with a look inside the garage of Michigan car collector Ted Stahl. Contributor Phil Berg is our guy. We'll be back tomorrow, maybe with a bit of a tan. Until then, enjoy the drive. Looking down from the second floor of the Hub Cafe inside Ted Stahl's giant Michigan garage, there are neat rows containing about 120 cars. All of them run, and they tell the story of significant cars built in America. The earliest is a 1902 Oldsmobile Curve Dash two-seater, which is almost lost in a row of famous General Motors cars that Stahl bought and restored to commemorate founder William C. Durant. Durant is Stahl's hero, but not the only one. Underneath the original Stahl's repair shop sign, which is used to separate the finished cars from those under restoration or having maintenance, are a rare Mercury pickup truck, a Peterson convertible, and a Bearcat Roadster. Stahl's grandfather opened the repair shop in Detroit in 1922. This June, 70-year-old Stahl, who only recently retired, is driving in his first vintage car rally, the 1,000-mile Great Race, in an immaculate low-mileage Packard Clipper convertible, which got a new rear axle and new seat belts in the shop. One wall of the garage is dedicated to preserving the memory of the famous Route 66, and Stahl found original signs from the highway, which passed through states from Illinois to California. Stahl especially likes unusual American cars, such as this super-rare 1919 Meisenhelder, which has running board-mounted jump seats and was built by hand in Pennsylvania out of aluminum. Newer cars are grouped together in another corner, including a Kaiser Darren Custom Roadster and a 1966 Pontiac GTO, which is the newest car in the garage. Ted Stahl says searching for unusual cars keeps him young, and that taking care of a garage is like painting a bridge. It's never finished. For AutoWeek, this is Phil Berg. Catch all the latest auto and business news at AutoWeek.com, in AutoWeek magazine and iPad edition. Talk with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at AutoWeek USA.